in order to get the most out of uh, brain research, we need to optimally obtain this data. So we need technologists coming up with devices that can, can generate good data with low noise and high fidelity. And then to interpret this data, we want to use the best tools available to us, which would come from areas like math and statistics. Finally, we want people with insights into the brain matter, and so we, we need our anatomists. My research encapsulates three areas, uh, analysis, so I've developed several algorithms for analyzing how devices generate electromagnetic fields inside the brain, and then uh, design, so I've applied these algorithms for designing uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation coils. And oftentimes we don't get to ask, you know, the, the deeper philosophical questions or, 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 or focus purely on the basic uh, foundational science. We have a whole range of different people from different backgrounds, with different beliefs, who have faced different struggles, then there'll be kind of a lot more opportunity for people to connect in other ways. And so what, what increasing diversity in STEM does, not only does it make STEM better, and leads to kind of more linkages to people working together. So I think kind of community building is one amongst kind of a whole plethora of reasons of why diversity in STEM is crucial. So what is neuroethics? There's two kinds of answers you might give to this question. The first is kind of a neuroscience of ethics. So these, this is a kind of project that asks the question, what can neuroscience tell us about how humans make ethical decisions? So the second type of question is what you might call the ethics of neuroscience. So these are questions like, how should research be conducted? What are different people's responsibilities with respect to the creation and use of neurotechnology? And how do ethics and values become embedded into the technologies that we build? And what are the lasting repercussions? When I came into this, I had no idea that there were so many different ways to think about ethics. Um, that surprised me. It's incredibly important to bring in people from diverse backgrounds, life experiences, um, perspectives, ways of thinking about life into uh, science. And the reason is because the brain, for example, in particular, is extremely complex. It's one of the most complicated, um, mysterious uh, features of biology. What's really critical is to bring in people that have completely different perspectives because people coming from different backgrounds have different ways of solving problems. They've dealt with different adversities and they've developed ways to adapt to those adversities that are very, very different. I think the most important thing that one can do is set goals, both short term and long term. Um, and then you really need to think very hard about how you're going to get to that ultimate goal. So if your goal is that you want to be an academic professor, you want to be um, someone who's doing independent research in an academic setting, how are you going to get there? There's a lot of people that don't take the steps to find out what kind of resources exist. Um, to help them get places like the Brain Initiative, for example, I think that. And then the other thing is have good mentors. Really choose well your mentors because there are key people that are give, giving you the tools, the advice that are gonna really be you know, helpful in getting to your goals. So I can tell that in this is my case, I have great mentors and without them, I, who knows I'd be here, but it's, uh, they, they're really key in one's path um, towards whichever our goals are.